Happy Saturday, everyone, and welcome to The Good Old Gamer. So this was a pretty interesting week here. The hack that happened on NVIDIA, we now got leaked information about their upcoming Ada Lovelace GPUs. Pretty much the entire lineup has been leaked. So that's really awesome, so we know what it is to expect coming this fall. We also have Samsung getting hacked by the same guys, and now they're starting to leak out information as well. Could be some pretty interesting bits there in the future if they leak out supply information. However, we don't have that just yet, but I do find it interesting that these guys are trying to expose a lot of the PC tech community. And AMD is also in the news launching the Ryzen 5500, the Ryzen 5600 non-X, and a 5700X. This is supposedly going to happen here in just a few weeks, so that is really awesome. There's a whole bunch more stories, but first... Are you tired of these annoying Windows activation prompts? Well, today's sponsor, UCD Keys, has a deal for you. Right now, UCD Keys is offering an amazing 30% off discount using promo code TD30 with any Windows licensed products. To take advantage of this, all you have to do is add the products you want to your cart and then go ahead and add the coupon code in. Once you apply the coupon code, you will see your discount immediately come off the top. And as mentioned, this works on everything from Windows 11 Pro, Windows 10 Pro, and Microsoft Office 2021, and many other options. All of them are down in the description below. If you want to take advantage of this offer right now, go ahead and make sure you remember to use that promo code TD30 and save 30% off today. Now back to our video. All right, so kicking things off with the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 40 ADA GPU architecture specs allegedly leaked up to 144 SMs, streaming multiprocessors. So this is information you guys probably already have if you've been watching the Techonomics podcast with Paul and I, or today, Connor and I, we this is obviously the big news that we were talking about, but I just want to briefly go over what the information is that we have. So this chart right here basically lines it up for us. So we can see that the AD102 chip is massive, an absolute monster going from 84 SMs all the way up to 144. This comes out to being 71% more in terms of pure raw FP32 shader count. And then we have the AD103, I keep wanting to call it GA103. Um, the AD103, this is likely going to be your 80 class and probably even the ADTI class. This is basically replacing the previous generation chip coming in at 84 SMs. Now, this is a big gap here. This is the most interesting part about this information is how wide the gap is between the 102 chip and the 103 chip because it's such a gulf there coming in at the same 71% difference that these chips right here are going to be absolute monsters in comparison. So it's going to be very interesting to see if NVIDIA does keep the ADTI class on the 102 die or just push these into a tier into like the stratosphere, into a whole new level, which I personally believe will be the case. And this will likely be your 80 and ADTI class. Now for the AD104, we're actually seeing a pretty good bump. We had 48 SMs, 48 SMs. Now that's going up to 60. That is a fairly decent jump there. 25% increase in shader count. So that's actually going to be a good bit faster than what we're seeing on the current 3070, meaning that this may theoretically get close to previous generation flagships uh, chips, which is what we usually expect from a 70 class card. Now, this is where things don't look so great. We have the GA106 with 30 SMs versus the AD106 coming in with 36. That's only a 20% increase. And this is significantly smaller than the jumps that we're seeing above it. So that means on the lower end or the more mainstream entry-level GPUs, we're going to see less of a performance gain than you will at the higher ends. Now, this isn't new. We've been seeing this over the past few generations. I prefer to see similar scaling across the board, but that simply isn't the case. Or what NVIDIA is going to do what I'm thinking is just make new tiers above anything we've ever seen before and just have the same scaling go across the board. We can also see the GA107 versus the AD107, same 20% bump. So yeah, in my opinion, I believe that the AD102 chips are going to be very expensive. I believe between two to $3,000, they might have two or three SKUs there. If we're really lucky, they might come out with the uh, 4080 Ti using the 102 die, but it'd be very, very cut down. And if they do that, it'd be very similar to what AMD did this generation with the RX 6800 non-XT. That was very, very cut down chip, and the supply was very limited on that because... 
Why would they want to cut down perfectly healthy chips at lower margins? So personally, I don't know if Nvidia would do that because we know how much Nvidia loves money. Now they might make three SKUs on the 102 die, have a Titan class at some stratospheric price point, and then have a, like a 4090 Ti and then a 4090 at, I guess, more reasonable price points. But I think that that's probably the best case scenario we will see out of that chip. For me, the biggest disappointment is the fact that the mainstream graphics cards are just not going to get that big of a bump. If we have 20% more shaders, we're expecting significant clock speed increases, but 20% more shaders does not mean 20% more performance. It means 10, maybe 15% higher performance there. So with the extra clock speed, at best, I see us only getting maybe a 30% bump. So you might be thinking, well, that's not too bad. Well, if you look at something like an RTX 3060, which is basically a 2060 Super 2070 level, you add 30% there, you're only looking at 2080 Super-ish level. Maybe that's close to like a 3060 Ti. So you're only getting like a $50 decrease in terms of price to performance there, as I believe that the 60 class cards from now on are going to be 350-ish just like they have been for the past two generations. So I don't think that we're going to get a huge bump at that particular price point, which isn't that great. And then if you think about the 3050, that's coming in at 1070 level performance, you have 30% there, that is only going to get you up to basically GTX 1080 level performance, which is close to something like a 2060. And I just don't think that that's good enough at those particular price points, in my opinion. But we have to wait and see. Maybe prices will be better you know, the performance increases won't be as good as we thought, or perhaps they get higher clock speeds than I'm anticipating, and they get more performance that way. Either way, this is going to be interesting. We should see performance gains across the board. I don't expect prices to go up too significantly. We will see price hikes, I think, more realistic MSRPs, but we should actually get these at the MSRP, which that I'm fine with. Raise the MSRP to a realistic level and then actually offer products at that price point. I think that's fine. For example, I just said the 4060, I believe will th be $350. I believe the 4080 will likely come in at 899. That's a more realistic price point for a chip like that. So yeah, it kind of sucks. Things will be going up in price. I see probably the 70 class going up maybe like a hundred bucks. Uh, or they might split it up with a 70 and 70 Ti and keep prices kind of where they are, but you won't get the performance gains that you're expecting. So it's going to be interesting. Uh, we're definitely going to be seeing NVIDIA take the gloves off. They're making the biggest, fastest GPU possible. We already knew that that was going to happen, but now we have numbers, so we can kind of theorize relative performance. We're looking at at least a two-fold increase in performance possibly even higher compared to something like a 3090. So it's going to be really exciting. And as we get more information, of course, I'll be talking about it. All right, next up is a little weird story. We have Intel to fuse off AVX 512 on Alder Lake Silicon going forward. So remember when AVX 512 was the big thing? for Intel, and now they're like, nah, you can't use it. Uh, apparently it has something to do with the fact that AVX 512 doesn't work on the E cores and it's just causing some issues. So they're basically just throwing in the towel here. So yeah, for all the people out there that were saying AVX 512, it's the most important thing in the world. Well, apparently not. So <laughs> Intel's backtracking off of this. So I, I guess you either need to buy HEDT level CPUs to do this or some other product because they're just not going to let you do it on mainstream products anymore. Now, next up kind of ties into what Connor and I were talking about on today's podcast. If you haven't seen that, links will be down below. But the divide between the value gamer and the enthusiast, as I just said, I expect the 4090s to be stupid expensive. NVIDIA's next-gen top-tier cards are going to be crazy. We have little things like this. The One X Player Mini handheld gaming console now available with Ryzen 5800U processor coming in at $840. Now, a lot of people are going to jump on this and be like, why would I get this over Steam Deck? Well, more than likely, you'll be able to get one of these before you can get a Steam Deck. So that's going to be part of it, as Valve Valve's offering is way better. I'm just going to be frank. It is much better than what these tiny companies can do. But at the same time, this is another indication of why having big mega corporations isn't the best thing in the world. It's making it much more difficult for smaller companies like these guys or the INEO guys to compete with somebody like Valve. 
And this preferential treatment that we're seeing in this world is pushing more and more companies into monopolistic status as smaller companies just have a harder time to compete. Personally, I think that at 840, this really isn't that bad. It's coming in with the 5800U, uh, so it does have a more powerful CPU than something like the Steam Deck. Obviously, the GPU is significantly weaker. It comes with 16 gigabytes of LPDDR4X, so it's not as good as DDR5, but still pretty darn good. And yeah, I mean, it's a nice little console. It looks much like the Aya Neo that I had. The price point, like I said, is a little bit high. I would like to see something like this at like six or $700, but due to the fact that this isn't some giant corporation, they don't get the deals. And a lot of other people are asking, why wouldn't they use the 6000 series APUs? AMD won't be selling those to anybody besides huge system integrators until next year. This is the way that things go right now. The small guys have to wait until technology is being phased out, get them at a discount, and then they can offer you decent prices. So yeah, this is kind of indicating some of the issues that we have here. And the reason why we don't have a lot of competition is because the market just isn't allowing for it and catering to the big mega corporations. Speaking of a big mega corporation, MSI launches the Mag Trident S with Ryzen 5000 G series mobile uh, CPUs in them. So this is actually a big corporation starting to get into this small form factor market. Now this is going to be designed as basically a stream box type of thing or to play mobile games now that you can run Android apps on Windows 11. I'm personally very interested in these small form factor PCs. Looks to be probably about the size of an Xbox Series S here in this picture. It's not too terribly big. You can see the internal design here. It looks pretty cool. I like it. I like the small form factor. If it's priced right, something like this would be great. The real problem is, is a device like this needs to be sub $500 with an eight core 16 thread 5700G, which means these guys have to get stupid good deals from AMD. And that is definitely an advantage a huge company like MSI can leverage. The issue is they don't sell a lot of units like this. They're kind of a niche thing. They sell tons of motherboards and graphics cards and whatnot, but this type of device, I really want to see somebody like a Dell or a Lenovo make because they're kind of the only people that'll be able to get the price point right. I haven't been able to find a price on this. I was looking to see what they were, if you could buy one, all that kind of stuff. They're just not available at this point in time as far as I could tell. But this is an interesting little device and it definitely shows that there's a growing market of PC gamers that are no longer interested in high dollar, high performance systems anymore. They want small, low power, compact form factors, and they want to get the maximum value out of it. So I, I think these devices are really, really cool. And as mentioned, Samsung allegedly hacked by the same group as NVIDIA. The first data has leaked. So it looks like Lapsus is back at it, going in there, taking on Samsung as well. Um, in terms of what they can gain from this, the only information that I'd really be interested in from Samsung is what they're wafer allocation to NVIDIA is. I, I really would like to know exactly how many graphics cards NVIDIA is pumping out. Besides that, I personally don't care. The, Samsung doesn't have any IPs that really interest me, but at the same time, it looks like these guys just aren't stopping. They might go for AMD or Intel next, and it will make the market more transparent. I know a lot of people be like, well, these guys shouldn't be doing this. Of course not. You shouldn't be stealing people's data. That's, that's pretty much a given. However, since they are doing it, I'm one of those glass half full type of guys on this, what can we as the customer gain from this? And that's more transparency. And honestly, I'm okay with that at this point in time because these companies are very, very opaque here lately. All right, guys, so here's the last one and it's a big one. AMD rumored to launch the Ryzen 5 5500 and 5600 and Ryzen 7 5700X this month. All right, so this comes from a leak from uh, Mega's mega size GPU, okay? Um, but he went in here and basically said that they're going to be priced very competitively as well. Now, to me, this almost seems like wishful thinking. So according to mega size, AMD is expecting to launch the two six core CPUs uh, while the clock speeds remain unknown. The major difference between both parts is the 5500 will not have SMT, which typically is the case whenever they do have a uh, Ryzen 5 X500 series, it's usually without SMT. And the cost, and uh, the 5500 should cost less than the 12100 CPU, which comes in at 122. That'd be very, very interesting if they do that. If they launch it for 110 or 109 or whatever, basically where the F model usually lands on the 12100, that would be extremely competitive and 
probably a bit faster in multi-thread workload, still lose in single thread, of course, but that would make it quite competitive with the i3. And then the 5600 non-X, on the other hand, should cost less than the 12400, which is 192 US price tag. So that would be pretty good seeing a sub $200 Ryzen 5 5600. Uh, clock speeds will probably be 10% slower than what we see on the X series models. That's usually the case. But with the 5600X being a 65 watt part anyway, I don't know, maybe they wouldn't even drop that much. We'll have to wait and see, but that would be really, really excellent. And then AMD's A-Core 16 thread 5700X would cost less than the i5 12600KF, which is coming in at uh, $264. So if you figure it's coming in basically at the same price, as like uh, the 5600G, the $250 price point, this would be much, much better value if you need the higher core count versus the iGPU. And it really just goes to show that AMD could have done this whenever they really needed to. These are parts that a lot of people have been waiting on. So if you're using something like a Ryzen 5 2600, 2700, 2700X, you know, the budget CPU lineup that we had there for a long time, or even something like a 3600 or a 3700X, it might be time to upgrade and max out your platform. As I mentioned, later this month, we should see the 5800X 3D. And yeah, that's going to be a one-off, super expensive. Most people are not going to buy this to max out their AM4 CPUs or platforms. So for everybody else, you'll have a better option. And I'm pretty good with that. It'd be great to see AMD compete at those price points. These would be significantly cheaper than any other Zen 3 CPUs that they've produced, even their G-Series uh, APUs. So this would put them in a pretty good position, I think, against Intel. And then I could actually recommend going with AMD once again, especially since their motherboards are more affordable. So yeah, hopefully that happens. I'm going to wait to see the pricing. Ultimately, this is all going to be about pricing. If pricing is not competitive enough, who really cares? You know, if they come out with the uh, Ryzen 5 5500 and it's $150, I'm still going to recommend the 12100 or go ahead and get the 12400F because faster and a little bit more or slightly slower and way cheaper. So it's all going to be down to pricing if they're right and they are very competitive on price. I think AMD is going to be able to steal a lot of Intel's thunder. Uh, obviously, they did not want to do this. They did not want to cut down their chips and sell them for this these price points because this is what everybody's been wanting. These are the chips that everybody's been waiting for. And there's a lot of people that are gonna gobble these up. At the very least, it's the end of the AM4 platform. What do they care? They're gonna be getting all the enthusiasts to move over later this year. So they might as well make money off the rest of us at this point. So yeah, it makes sense for me and makes sense for AMD to do it here and now to be competitive. So very interesting, glad to see it. Well, alrighty, guys, I'm going to cut it a little bit shorter today. No good old game of the day. I do have to do the podcast with Connor. I'm actually going to do that technically after this, but this video will go live later in the day. So busy, busy day for me. I want to thank you guys for sticking around till this point. If you haven't subscribed over on the Techonomics podcast, please do so. Paul and I are on there twice a week talking about all sorts of cool stuff, and we get some fun guests throughout the industry, get differing opinions, and of course, we love hearing from you guys, hearing your thoughts live and we can react to them in real time. So I really appreciate that. And that's really all I have for you guys here today. And I will catch you guys in the next video.